sort of staying on that topic Mm -hmm. of, again, race relations, I want to focus now even a little bit more narrowly and specifically um, on the relationship between Asian and black communities uh, within these cultures. Mm. Uh, You know, as an activist and and, and an artist um, who isn't afraid to talk about these things, like how do you feel about the Mm -hmm. race relations between Asian and black people either in the United States or, you know, specifically in Japan. And what do you think, and in your experience, what does that solidarity and, you know, more of the positive side, what does that look like over uh, in Japan? Okay. So in Japan, what I've noticed is they are still, they still put out ads. A while back, someone showed me a cartoon that was like a very racist stereotype of black people. And the Japanese and uh, like media use likes to use the excuse that well they don't know because like they don't have a huge black population there. And it's like no, it's 2021. You can't use that excuse anymore. And that's never an excuse to begin with because you should before you actually go through the making a cartoon is a hard process. And before you go through the process of making a cartoon about something with good intentions, you need to actually make a cartoon that has a good message, not just be like, well, we tried to make a good message. We just didn't know any better. And it's like, no, you had the time to do the work to make something that actually would have been something good, but instead you were lazy and based it off of stereotypes and just felt that everyone should just accept it because you're Japan and you're not like America in that way. So that's 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 the major thing I noticed about Japanese media and Japanese media, especially like NHK and a lot of the major broadcasts, base a lot of their comedy and shows off of stereotypes. And that is something that, once again, they can't use the they need to stop trying to use the excuse of. But it's well, with Japan, you know, we don't have a that community so we don't know well it's like i said it's you have the internet you have access to people and what they actually look like and what they do not base it off of some stereotype that was printed and and uh propaganda that was put out during segregation so a lot of a lot of the stereotypes that they have also is based off of a time when there was segregation and there was racial propaganda and over here it was like blackface was okay. And so like there's still people in Japan that think blackface is okay because they don't, it's not out of a racist place because they didn't have that happen over there. And it's like, no no it's bad everywhere it's Mm -hmm. like you you can't do that but they that's the main thing i've noticed in japan they always try to they need to look at themselves a little harder and just admit like just admit you're wrong apologize because japan apologizes when they do finally admit that they're wrong they do apologize because Mm -hmm. japanese culture as a whole likes to apologize for everything that they feel they've done wrong but they need to admit the guilt. They need to admit that they did wrong. And that's another thing I've noticed that a lot of times in Japanese culture, it's better to like ignore the problem, pretend it didn't happen rather than to face it and actually apologize for it. So in Japan, that's what I've noticed in the United States, um, especially since COVID there has been an uprise in not just white people, but also black people attacking members of the Asian community. Um, And, but at the, the, on the other side, there's always been, especially East Asians that have been very, a very strong hatred and animosity against black people. So, and it's like, you can't make one worse than the other, but you have to admit that both of those things are wrong. So it's like you're both being racist, but in different ways, and it comes from a different place. Um, The Asian community has not been good. It's the black community. Like I, I see things and it's just, it's just not. For years, 
with uh, white society viewing Asians as the model minority. It's like a lot of what I see, especially in like the higher up of social economic socioeconomic status it seems like a lot of asian americans um just develop the same oppressive mentality towards other people of color it's like they to be accepted it's the collectivist mentality but all wrong like for all the wrong reasons like they go along with stuff and then it just perpetuates very harmful stereotypes, racism, harassment, anything that can become of that type of mentality, it happens. And then when you have, then you also have um, members of the Asian community that think it's like, okay to say the N word or something because of people of color. And it's like, no, you have to, you can't say that. You're Asian, shut up. So it's just, I've noticed both of those like they think it's okay because they got friends or they listen to hip-hop or whatever you know and because they're not white then they can say it and it's like no no you can't it don't work that way <laughs> and so you got the asian community members that are the model minority and like falling into that and just going along with the oppression and then you have colorism that has always been a thing in especially East Asian cultures, but even in Southeast Asia, like skin bleaching and lightning oh, yeah. creams and wanting to be as close to the European beauty standard or the white aesthetic as possible. And, um, it, and it's not even about the European beauty standard and many of these cultures. It is literally that they just want to be liked because being light was thought of at one time as being like higher, more wealth because you didn't have to go outside and work. So if you were darker, that meant that you didn't have as much because you had to work in the fields or whatever. And I think there's a lot of cultures in the world that believe that same way where it's like, if you were lighter, that meant you were inside. And if you were darker, that meant you had to work outside. So there's color and you have, like I said, the members of the Asian community that think that that think they're not racist, but they're like doing things that are racist, like saying the N word because they think they can, or wearing certain styles because they think they can. Mm -hmm. And just I've noticed that. But when soft Asian hate became a hashtag, it seemed like a lot of members of the Asian community expected black people to be immediately on that and be out in the front and be fighting for Asian rights. But where were the majority of Asians when Black Lives Matter was happening? Mm -hmm. they, they, exactly. weren't, they weren't doing it. So why are they expecting it? So that, that, that's, that's a major, that's something I really noticed. Like, if you didn't do anything, then why do you expect them to do something like right immediately? And of course, there are a lot of a lot of black people that have been at the forefront of stop Asian hate. And of course, there are Asians that were at the front of Black Lives Matter, like trying to be in solidarity and help out. But it's not it wasn't the majority. Mm -hmm. Like It was not the majority. Um, it was a small amount of people. And but if you reverse it, there are, I've noticed there are far more black people that are with Asians than there were the other way around. So that's another thing, like to move towards solidarity, you have to like, <laughs> there has to be a match in the feelings and you have to let, <sighs> at some point, the race relations between black and Asian, some small things, like I think you have to like, look at yourself and admit you both have some unpackaging to do of some very outdated and racist and oppressive feelings. And from both sides, I think there's work to be done, but you can't keep blaming, like you can't keep just going at each other when there's a much bigger problem going on right now. Mm -hmm. Like I always say, we're stronger together. Yeah. And that's like what we need to do is be 
stronger together and fight because at, at the end of the day we all want the same thing so it's like we just have different weight different journeys different stories to get to this place but we all want the same thing and you know like it's just you have to see through each other's eyes and just stronger together yeah i 100 percent agree you know and i'm glad that you had you know a very um in-depth and nuanced um sort of outlook on this because you know you're absolutely right like the um gosh i i i knew that when the stop asian hate uh sort of th movement was going on i knew that that reaction was going to happen that there were a bunch of asian people who were going to come out of the woodwork and be like well, I changed my profile picture to a black square and how and and they were real like you said like they had a feeling of entitlement like black people you owe us this as if they were again matching that energy which they weren't.